today on the OT, we break down LSU basketball's contest tonight against Arkansas and one LSU athlete who overcame all odds to help give her team the improbable upset this past weekend. All this and more coming your way. Hello and welcome to the OT, a segment of Tiger TV Sports Showtime. I'm Taylor Halsey and for the next 15 minutes we will take an in-depth look into the lives of your favorite Tigers and pros. Starting things off, the LSU women's basketball team pulled one of their greatest upsets in recent history on Sunday, stunning the then number 8 Kentucky Wildcats in the PMAC. But for junior guard John Kenny, the win was no ordinary contest. He he came to every game, <laughs> I'm pretty confident. And um, he, I mean, every time I would, if I remember, I would look up and, you know, he would just, we would catch eyes and he would just kind of give me a little salute and, you know, and he's going to be missed. Junior guard Sean Kenny used her grandfather's death as motivation on the court Sunday, just days after he passed away. Everything was surreal tonight. I'm already an emotional person. <laughs> on the court and I, you know, I just needed to do enough. And she did plenty. Kenny battled through emotions and an injured left foot to rack up a career high of 22 points while also making all five three-point attempts, leading LSU to their 77 to 72 upset of the number eight Kentucky Wildcats. Kenny said her excellent shooting night might have come from advice her grandfather often gave her. He keeps telling me to hold my follow through that's one thing that he would say, and then to stop taking so many charges because I'm going to get hurt. But I only listened to one tonight, so he's probably still mad at me. Nobody else on the team seemed to share that sentiment. Jean responded um, like her grandfather would want her to. And she's somebody um, who has always been unselfish, sacrifices her, her body, has sacrificed her game. This is Jean. Jean knocks down shots in really big situations like this. And after the game, Kenny didn't focus on the tragedy of her family's loss, but the triumph of her team's victory. I'm on top of the world. We beat the 7-8 team in the country at our place. You know, it doesn't, I mean, we won, so it's a win. It's a great win. Marina Jelpy, Tiger TV Sports. The Lady Tigers hold their senior night and last regular season home game tomorrow night against Alabama. Tip-off is set for 7 p.m. at the PMAC. The fourth-ranked LSU baseball team defeated ULL 11-2 in their first road game of the season. The Tigers were very productive at the plate with designated hitter Alex Edward producing an RBI grounder and first baseman Mason Katz scoring off a ULL error. Freshman Alex Bregman hit his very first homer of the season, adding another three runs to the board. And catcher Ty Ross increased LSU's lead 6-0 with a perfectly placed bunt. Cody Glenn, the left-handed sophomore, earned the win, throwing seven shutout innings and recording one strikeout. You can catch the Tigers at Alex Box on Friday at 7 p.m. as they take on Brown. The Louisiana High School Athletic Association recently passed a rule that drastically changed the landscape of 5A baseball. For more, we go to Matt Smith, who tells us why the rule might make competition a little bit better. Two pitchers, 25 combined innings, and nearly 350 pitches thrown. It was a game last spring that received national attention for all the wrong reasons, and it prompted a change within the LHSAA. It's a pretty good system. Like I said, it's, uh, I'm sure there'll be some kinks in it, but it's definitely going the right way and an improvement on what we have right now. The change, proposed by Denham Springs head coach Mark Carroll, will make the second and third round of the 5A playoffs into a three-game series. He said they looked at other options, but settled on this format so school principals would agree to the change. We love it two out of three all the time, but that's not going to fly all the time. Uh, the principals, in order to support it, you had to work up a system such that you weren't going to be missing any more school. In addition to the format change, the rule will limit pitchers to 10 innings per round of the playoffs. Plus, if a pitcher throws more than four innings in a game, he cannot pitch the next game of the same round. Uh, I think that was the whole purpose of what they were trying to do, is they were trying to make sure that the team that only had the one good pitcher 
didn't use that pitcher every game and ultimately win the state championship with only one good pitcher. It's something that Carroll says needed to be changed. As much headlines as that's gotten lately and as much it is about pitch counts and safety of the kids and not, not abusing and overusing one of them, it, it's, you got to have it in there. He added the new changes will make the sport better within the state of Louisiana. Some of the rules that we're getting in finally uh, I think are improving baseball in the state and making it better for our kids, you know, and I think this will make it better for our kids. More of a team thing where you have to develop more pitchers than just that one stud. Reporting for Tiger TV, I'm Matt Smith. Though the LHSAA passed the rule before baseball season began, the changes will not go into effect until the 2014 season. LSU women's track and field is currently ranked number one. Reporter Sydney Armstrong brings us an inside look on one of LSU's most talented sprinters. Kimberlyn Duncan is sprinting her way to becoming one of LSU's most recognized track and field athletes. I never thought I'd be the athlete that I am now, so it's an honor of uh, being able to receive all that and, and getting the recognition for it. As a five-time NCAA champion, nine-time All-American, and the 2012 recipient of the Bowerman Award, Duncan still can't believe all the recognition. It's an honor. I, uh, coming here, I never thought that I would be getting some of the things that I'm uh, receiving. In her quest to become pro, Duncan competed in the USA Olympic trials last year, but she missed her chance to be on Team USA by only one spot. It was a great experience uh, being able to go out there, being able to even go out there, compete and make the finals, and hopefully uh, was trying to make the Olympic team. Missing it by one spot, it was uh, heartbreaking, but um, it, it's motivation for this season. Uh, I have uh, other world teams that I can possibly try and make and then going back out there for Rio and, and seeing what I can do again. So it was heartbreaking, but it was motivation. Head coach Dennis Shaver has watched Duncan mature these last four years, but says there are never any guarantees in the pros. Well, she's definitely going to be trying, you know. But she's certainly shown uh, the uh, talent and the ability, and I think has matured from the from the mental aspect of it to, that she can perform at an extremely high level in those kind of pressure-packed situations. Even with all her success at LSU, Duncan will never stop dreaming until she's competing in the 2016 Rio Olympics. Hopefully, uh, with track, um, continue on to becoming a pro track athlete. It'd be nice to get paid to do something that you love. So, For LSU's Tiger TV, I'm Sydney Armstrong. You can catch Duncan and the rest of the LSU track and field team compete on February 22nd as they head into the SEC championships. But stick around, we have so much more coming at you right after this quick break. Well, it's NFL Combine time, and we are all wondering how the man with the imaginary girlfriend would perform. Let's take a look. The NFL Combine is the toughest job interview in sports, and Manti Teo is having mixed results right now as he tries to put to rest the scandal over his fake girlfriend. Teo was decidedly average Monday going through on-field drills. I spoke to several head coaches on their way out of the stadium, and they underlined that in particular his 40-yard dash time was slower than they had hoped. Still, Teo has earned points for his handling of the media this week. During a high-pressure press conference, he came across as composed and straightforward. It's definitely embarrassing. Um, you're walking through grocery stores and you kind of like, you know, give people double takes and you know, see if they're staring at you. You know, it's, it's definitely embarrassing. And uh, it's, 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 I guess, it's part of the process. It's part of the journey. Um, but, you know what, you know, it's only going to make me stronger and it, it definitely has. Some teams, like the Carolina Panthers, have already come out and said they just don't see this as something that will push Teo down the draft board. NFL teams routinely draft players with off-field problems, many of them much more serious, like DUIs or battery charges. As New York Giants general manager Jerry Reese put it, I think there's people with a lot more issues than this issue. Other teams, though, have said they do still have concerns. Regardless, the Teo situation has had one interesting larger effect. Minnesota general manager Rick Spielman said that since Teo, the Vikings have started carefully examining what players have posted on their Twitter and Facebook pages, and that they're going to take that into account when they decide who to draft this year. The Seattle Seahawks, well, they're doing the same. Of course, many companies outside of professional football are also looking at social media when choosing who to hire. So as Teo labors here at the Combine, his story is not only resonating around the NFL, but with young job seekers everywhere. Back to you guys in the studio. Teo is a guy that was a Heisman candidate less than three months ago, and now, well, he might as well be invisible. But stick around, the OT will be right back after the break.
Welcome back to the OT. Now, how's this for standing out in a crowd? The very tall, very tatted up NBA Hall of Famer Dennis Rodman is in North Korea. He's there with three members of the famed Harlem Globetrotters to entertain while they film a TV documentary. And Rodman, whose nickname is The Worm, is tweeting from within the country. He says, quote, maybe I'll run into the Gangnam Style dude while I'm here. Only one problem, pop star Psy is in South Korea, not North Korea. Let's get it right, Robin. And now we take you live to the PMAC, where our very own Monica Resch is in the PMAC to bring you what's next for the Razorbacks. Thanks, Taylor. We're live here at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center, where the LSU Tigers are taking on our, our, where the LSU Tigers are taking on the Arkansas Razorbacks. After a slow start in the SEC, 0-4. The Tigers have now improved their record to 7-7. Seven and seven. With two weeks left until the SEC tournament, the Tigers hope to use their momentum after a triple overtime win against rivals Alabama last Saturday to help defeat the Razorbacks. In a press conference on Thursday, Johnny Jones said LSU's biggest challenge will be to face, will be dealing with the Razorbacks' ability to scramble and convert into points. Um, LSU will also need to contain Arkansas guard, B.J. Young. You can catch the game at 7 o'clock. Okay. Thank you, Monica. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for tuning in.